A rocky start to 2016. If the global stock market is any indication of what's to come, brace yourself. On the year's first day of trading, shares plunged in China, sending a tidal wave of selling from east to west. It started this morning on the Shanghai Stock Exchange. Markets opened in the red after investors learned manufacturing in China shrank for a tenth straight month. Yet another sign the world's second largest economy is slowing. By midday, the index was down 5%. That forced regulators to use a new circuit breaker system available starting today to prevent steep drops. They halted markets for 15 minutes, but right after trading resumed, the index fell another 2%. Regulators pulled that emergency lever again, closing the index 80 minutes earlier than scheduled. That angst spread to other major markets on that side of the ocean, where investors are already spooked by growing tensions between Iran and Saudi Arabia, two oil powerhouses of the Middle East. Finally, the wave of fear came crashing onto our shores. In the U.S., the Dow fell by as much as 450 points in today's trading. It closed about 1.5% lower. The Nasdaq lost 2%. And here in Canada, the Toronto Stock Exchange finished in the red, but not as deeply as U.S. markets. According to an old Wall Street saying, as January goes, so does the year. Here for some perspective is Don Reed, president and CEO of Franklin Templeton Investments. What did you make of this market decline? Well, you know, the start off in China, of course, was uh, weak, to put it mildly, uh, but not unexpected because the circuit breakers were kicking in today. And in another three or four days, all those people, the insiders, who were stopped from trading in July of last year are allowed to trade again in their stocks. So you could have expected a, somewhat of a rocky mm. beginning to the market. Do you think that the selling may continue, given that, that those restrictions will be lifted soon? Uh, I think that there's some possibility, but certainly the fundamentals of the market don't support the selling that's going on now. Why do you say that? Well, first of all, we talk about the PMI being lower, and yes it is, but only marginally. If you take a look at the service economy in, in China, it's showing tremendous growth and has shown positive growth for the last uh, 16 months. Also, unemployment in China uh, is uh, at rock bottom levels because there's a, a shortage of labor. For every 114 jobs available in China, there are only 100 workers in the labor force that are able to fulfill these. So these underpinnings, to me, will support the consumer. So you're not markets. inferring what so many are inferring, that China's demand is weakening? No, not at 7% growth, Bruce. Uh, you know, it, it, what are we going to grow at a third of that level here in Canada this year? And China China, yes, it's not growing as quickly as it did last year, but all the naysayers that were looking for 6.5% growth in China were disappointed when they saw that it came in closer to 7, and that 7 is probably the number that's uh, going to occur going forward. Do we have to read the market performance in China differently than other markets, given the involvement of the government? I mean, a lot of the commentary today used the word rigged when referencing the performance of the stock market. Yeah, and, and it's hard to support uh, anything, uh, you know, saying that the market was rigged. You know, we had circuit breakers in the U.S. that were put in place by Nick Brady back a couple of decades ago, and they do work. But this is the first experience that they've had in China with these. And as soon as the, uh, the, the market was halted after the 5% decline, there were a bunch of people who were lined up and said, hey, I've got to get out of this market. But I think that's a short-term phenomenon. Through the lens of a Canadian investor focused on Canadian stocks, how did you interpret today's selling? I don't think it has anything to do with uh, uh, what's going on in Canada. For example, uh, when we take a look at, at oil prices, which, by the way, ended the day lower, notwithstanding some of the other things going on mm. in the geopolitical arena. Uh, in Canada, the market was not as weak as some of those uh, other markets. Mind you, after having lost 11% last year, it's not surprising. Mm. But I don't think the impact was directly related to uh, what's going on in the Canadian market. You referenced the issues in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia and Iran, uh, the situation escalating there. Yes. How do you think that will affect the price of oil, if not today, then over the course of weeks and months? I think the market goes lower, but not for those reasons. I don't think that that has a major impact on the market, primarily because the supply side is so heavy. There's such a glut on the market that we may see some short-term blips on the upside because of the geopolitical events that are happening, just as we saw this morning with oil moving, first of all, up about 3 or 4%, but closing the day lower. I think that uh, the price of oil is going to be determined much more by the supply side of oil because the, the tanks are all full in, in Cushing and Oklahoma and other 
other parts where storage, is, uh, storage facilities are used. What are some of the other themes that you're watching as we get started on 2016? Well, I think, first of all, that uh, the emerging markets, are we're probably going to see some growth in the emerging markets. From, an, from a valuation standpoint, the, uh, the uh, emerging markets are about uh, two-thirds of the level of the markets here in North America. So there's some room to move there. And we're probably going to see some decent growth from those satellite countries around uh, China, notwithstanding what a lot of the naysayers are saying. You've been around for many cycles, both up and down. How would you characterize your mood about the, this global sentiment? I think that the, the uh, global sentiment is providing good opportunities, especially for value investors such as myself. Mm. I think that's, that's the best time to uh, participate and get in on the buy side. Don, thank you very much. Always a pleasure, Bruce. Good Don. to see you.